Okay. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen. Get recording in. So you guys can see that hopefully. And someone else is monitoring, monitoring the chat other than me. So if you have a question, yep. um, they'll let me know to stop and, and cover that. All right, so hopefully you're seeing the finding OER for your course slides there. I'm getting the feedback from somebody. Okay. We'll try to do the I would need to mute somebody up here. Can you come? Can you come? Make sure everybody's muted. Yeah, make sure you're muted so we don't get the feedback. I don't think it's sharing. Over there. Okay. I'm gonna to try to get away from the computer and see if that works better. All right. Okay, so basically what we're gonna to cover today is we're gonna to review the best places to search for OER, whether that be textbooks, assignments, lectures, or other materials. We're going to talk about how to evaluate OER to make sure it's a good fit for your students. And at the end, we're going to have some time for practice to search and evaluate, give you some dedicated time for that. So think of today kind of like a, an OER treasure hunt. You know, there's no real central repository for all OER. It's kind of scattered in a lot of different places. Um, but I'm going to walk you through some of our favorites today. So we're going to start with a poll question. If you would click that link at the top can the, to the poll, it should take open it up in Minty. You'll go to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I, and then it'll give you a code here in a second that pops up. There it goes. I'm just curious to know what brought you to the workshop today. So you might share if you're looking for a specific topic or a subject, if you are looking to replace a te certain textbook, or maybe you're just looking to supplement. Just kind of what are you hoping to get out of today? So I'm gonna give you guys a minute or so to get to that. And your answers will start popping up on here in a second as you guys answer the question. If you have any issues with getting to the to that poll question, let us know in the chat. So it should just be Minty, M-E-N-T-I. What is the code, Janelle? It's hidden for me underneath the thumbnail. Mm -hmm. I can't see what it is right now. There we go. Well, where did mm -hmm. it? It's not showing up, is it? Hold on a second. Try to refresh it real quick because it should show up at the top. I just did this a minute ago to test it. We just had a question in the chat, and so I wanted to be able to type it into the chat. Okay, well, as technology goes, it looks like that's not going to work. So if you just want to put it in the chat, you can share it that way, mm -hmm. and we can all see it there. Mm -hmm. Just share what brought you to the workshop today. Anne is developing an online course, okay? Um, multiple courses, just to be fair, I misread that. And Joan is working on a press book. Yes, I know, awesome. She has several press books. No way. She does, mm -hmm. she's got lots of them. And they're in French, so. Yes. <laughs> Kristen is supporting her talented colleague, oh, okay. Smiley Face. <laughs> And Karen says OER reduces textbook. Oh, Y'all are going so fast. It's bigger. Reduces textbook uh, costs, I believe. Yeah, expenses for students. Savannah is expanding OER available for her online students. Cool. And Vajira, hi Vajira, it's Kat, um, finds OER course materials for a very specific subject, actuarial science. Ooh, okay. So we'll, we'll talk about how to browse different ways for different subjects as we get into some of the later slides. So we'll go on to the next one. And I thought it was important we would just kind of start with a shared understanding of what it means, what is OER. So this is from a definition from UNESCO. And the things that stand out here are a couple of things. So teaching, learning, and research materials could be digital or print, it could be either one. And what's really important here is that they're either in the public domain or they have an open license. And so what that means usually is a Creative Commons license. We're gonna explain a little bit of what that means in case you don't know here in a second. Okay, so I kind of like a simpler definition of OER that kind of gets bogged down with a lot of words. I like OER equals free, 
free to access, plus freedom to do the five R's. And so the five R's is something that came from David Wiley that he, in his definition of OER, and it means you have to be able to do all of these things. So if you can't do all this, then some people say it's not true OER. So that, that gets into a gray area. But so what, it, what are the five R's? So retain, you can make, make and own copies of it. You can keep a copy of it. Reuse it, you can use it in a wide range of ways. Revise it, you can adapt, modify, and improve it. Remix, you can combine it with another OER or multiple OERs. And then lastly, you can redistribute it and share it with others. So let's, let's do just a brief little lesson about Creative Commons. So Creative Commons starts with these four kind of basic elements. The first one here is the, the CC BY. That's what all the licenses have. And that just simply means you have to give attribution. You have to give credit back to the author of where you got that content from. The next one is NC, which stands for non-commercial. You can't profit from it if it has that part in the license. SA stands for share alike. If you see something with share alike in the license, it means if you decide to make your own OER with that material, you also have to have a share alike license. That's part of their, their permissions. And then lastly is the one you kind of really need to watch out for is the ND. That stands for no derivative. So that means you can't change it. And that's what really people say is not real, o real OER because if you can't adapt it, it's not truly open. But you can still use it. You can still access it for free. You just can't make changes to it or remix it with other things. So those are the four elements and what those mean. And then you can combine all of those together into these six different licenses. The one at the top is the most open CC BY. Basically, you can do anything you want with it if you see a CC BY license, as long as you give credit. As long as you give attribution back to that author, then they'll let you do whatever you want. You can change it, share it, all different kinds of things, even for a commercial, even if you want to make money off of it. And then the most restrictive is the one down here on the bottom, CC BY, NC, and D. That means you have to give attribution. It has to be non-commercial and it's no derivative, so you can't change it. So it's kind of the range of open to most restrictive. Okay, so let's go into finding OER. Now that we kind of know what it is and what some of the licenses are, there's a really a simple process for finding OER, and it's similar to when you're looking for other things. Number one, you're gonna identify keywords, and we're gonna walk through how to pick good keywords here in a little bit. Number two is search OER repositories. I want to share some of our best bets for that. Number three is evaluate the resources. And then lastly, reflect. Think back and see, is it going to fit for your specific course or not? And this came from the OER Starter Kit. If you've not ever checked that out, that's a really great resource for anybody that's just learning about OER and all different kinds of aspects of that. Um, a couple of things before, let's go back to that just for a second, Kim. Mm -hmm. Sorry. No, not in years. It doesn't. A um, couple quick tips about the search process. So I made some notes to share with you. I suggest you start really broad. So that's kind of a librarian strategy when you're doing searches of like, don't narrow it down right off the bat. So think of your subject area broadly and what kind of topics you can search for. And then after you have some topics, think of specific keywords and synonyms for those keywords so that you can kind of gather everything out there right now on that topic and then you can narrow it down later. Um, as far as keywords, we're gonna have a little worksheet where you're gonna write down your topic and then pick keywords for that topic. And a great place to start is if you have a textbook now that you're using, look at that table of contents, pick out keywords from that, that can be, that can be super helpful. Brilliant. Yeah. All right, <laughs> now you can go to the next one. You should keep you. Okay. The first one I want to show you is the Open Textbook Library. So we're going to click into that link there. And hopefully you guys are, this one's going to work. <laughs> so the reason I like the Open Textbook Library, this is my go-to when you're looking specifically for textbooks, because it's just, it's just textbooks. Um, it has about four. Can share the screen? I can say not. Sorry to interrupt. You're not sharing it's sharing, it's sharing a different the PowerPoint. It's not sharing open library. 
and then go back and talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> we'll get there in a second. Yeah. So the things I like about Open Textbook Library, there we go, is that it has faculty reviews, number one. So you can go in and see specific reviews and you can see names of people at different institutions that have reviewed it in your field. It also will list textbooks that are in development. So things that people are working on right now. So for example, let's look at, I talked about let's browse first. That's my, another strategy is I would suggest browse the subjects, then go in and do your keyword search se second. We're not so, just gonna start a culinary math. We are not. So that's fascinating. So let's go to browse subjects. <laughs> And let's go under business and go just to accounting as an example. And so just a real broad category and then just look through things that come up. I would just kind of do a quick scan and see if anything looks helpful. Uh, so we got different things of principles of accounting volume two. Let's go down a little bit further. Let's look at. Well, I was going to, yeah. before we go too far, if we can look at the licenses on these as we're going, because they'll show you which of those things you can and can't do. So this, the first one, this principles of managerial accounting is just the CC by and share alike. So you'd have to attribute who wrote it. And then if you make copies or derivatives of it, you would have to say it was initially by this person and then also by me. And you have to use that same code. The one underneath it has the NC on it. Mm -hmm. So you still have to, buy and you still have to share alike, but this is where you also can't use it for any kind of financial gains, which if you're looking for it for your academic class, oh, okay, you're not going to sell it to your students in class, but that's that's where that important designation comes as the difference to really look at those before you get too far into the free textbook, because if it's one that's no derivatives, I would recommend just walking right straight past it. Right. Unless you just want to share it as it is. Yeah. Okay. It's a perfect match, but usually it's not, not, you're not going to find a perfect match. So, yeah, let's look at, go down a little bit further. I think there was an example of this one right here, Principles of Financial Accounting. Let's click into that one, just as an example. So over here, you're going to see this one has four reviews right now. If you scroll down a little further, you can see those specific reviews listed down here and the names of the professors and their institutions and the date. So that can be helpful. Um, up above that, there's a couple of things I want to point out. So formats available. This one has just got a PDF, which that's okay. A lot of them have PDFs, but it's nice to have multiple formats. So we'll look at another example in a minute. Um, the Open Textbook Library does not host these. They just link out to where they're at at other places. So um, that's something interesting to know. Under here, where it says conditions of use, that's where if you have any kind of question about the license, you can click on it, and it will take you to the specific permissions that you have if you don't know what that means. So it's also helpful here that you can see the chapters and that can help you as you're um, seeing if it's a good match for the topic that you're looking at. Okay, let's go up and do a keyword search at the top. So let's browse first. Then if you have those keywords you've picked out, let's put in like something really raw, just like public speaking. So things will start to pop up that match. But I like to just go ahead and hit go and, and see what the list is. And so I think this is a good example right here. There's this book called Stand Up, Speak Out. And if you notice, it's got 57 reviews. So that's in use by a lot of different institutions. Um, go ahead and click on, click on that one. This one? Yeah. I like this one as an example because you can see here, if you scroll down the different formats. So this one's got not only a PDF, but several different ways you can download it. Plus it's got the online version that you can read in press books. So that's nice if you want to share it and just link to it, or if your student wants to download it and read it later. So that's nice that all that's linked there for you. All right, that was just another quick example. So anything, any questions about the Open Textbook Library at this point? That's my go-to for textbooks. If you're looking specifically, you want a textbook, that's where I would go first. Okay, we'll go back to the PowerPoint if we get there. It's okay. I know attention to me. Go on about your day. So okay. the next thing we're going to look at is called Pressbooks Directory. And it is one of my favorites because, well, there's several reasons. First of all, we have a subscription right now. MTSU subscribes to Pressbooks. So anything you find in the Pressbooks Directory, if you want to clone it and adapt it, it's super easy 
it, since we have a Pressbooks network of our own. You want the main directory or you want MTSU? Just the main one, yeah. What do you mean by clone and adapt? So clone means it will copy it for you. And if we go in and create a Pressbooks account through MTSU, you can go in and find a book and it will copy it over directly for you, make it super easy, and then you can adapt it and change it how you want. So some of those press books that Joan has been writing yes. may be accessible to all of us right. to use in our coursework. Once someone's made it public oh. and they've published it through the directory, then other people can use it. And then you can also kind of see where it's in use at other institutions, which is cool. I so. learn something new every time. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So in here, let's browse first, just like we did before. So if you scroll down, First of all, I want to point out they have these neat curated collections. So they have one specifically for language learning, interactive OER, high enrollment courses. That's kind of neat to explore. If you want to go ahead and look for a specific topic, if you scroll down and look over on the left side. Oh, yeah. We have a question from Karen. She's saying, are students receptive to open access textbooks? Or do they think that because they are open access materials, it's lesser than purchased textbooks? I'll let you guys answer that because you're the ones that have that experience of using that in your classes. Anybody wants to share? Um, so in elementary education, we use um, an OER collection that Dr. Godwin and Dr. Hooser worked on creating uh, sources from all over to support the intro to ed curriculum. And so students do not have to pay for it. They have instant access to the whole book from the first day, actually from the week before school starts. Um, and they are very receptive to it because it saves them a lot of money. I'm not sure students in general are receptive to any type of textbook in, in general, but I think they're grateful when they don't have to shell out a hundred bucks for a paperback. So that, I think that's a great question, Karen. And we are actually, that's actually part of what I'm gonna talk about in a little bit is the, is the where in that paradigm of, of textbooks and the concept of, of value and rigor. Um, and who is it that is conveying that? Uh, and where does that come from so much? We associate that students don't see it as genuine or rigorous, but is it the student that's using those words? Um, so we'll cover that one actually just a little bit more here in just a minute. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention about Pressbooks, right now it has 6,000 books in there. So it's just like exploded in like the last year as more and more faculty members are creating projects. There's new stuff in there every day. So I would always like to check that and see what's available. So if you want to limit by subject, you can go right here. Today. This <laughs> That's right. Produced today. Right. Awesome. <laughs> click. You can click subject right here. And then you can go down and browse by a certain subject. So let's do, for example, math. You just click the little check next to math. So right now there are 67 books that they've categorized as mathematics. And then you can go through and browse that, or you can go in and limit by all these other things here. So let's say if you wanted to look for a math book on that had a certain license. I think that's up at the very top, maybe. Up at the top, if you click license, you can limit and what I would probably do is check all of these, or you could just knock out the all rights reserved. So those are the ones that you can adapt. So if you want to pick one with a certain license, my suggestion would just be to take those out because you can't, can't modify those. And then you can filter through and look at, look at it that way. Um, let's just open one of those, Kim, whichever one you think. Okay, so what comes up once you click on the book is it's going to usually just give you an introduction here of what the book's about. And over here is what where you can download different formats. So not only can you read it as a web book, depending on the author, this is totally up to the author how they want to export different formats. They can decide if they want to offer a PDF or an EPUB or different things. So if you decide down the road to create a Pressbooks project of your own here, you can make things and you can make different exports for your students which is nice that they have different ways they can access it. Um, if you scroll down past the table of contents, here's where you can read through and see the different things about the book. Um, at the very, very bottom, usually there's some more licensing information to double check what you're allowed to do with the book. This is got a lot of chapters. 
Okay, so it'll tell you description. Here's the license here. This one's CC BY. So it's from OpenStax and you're free to do whatever you want with it. If you want to go modify it, move chapters around, take things in and out, as long as you give them credit that you got it from there. It, we were talking about the pulling things into press books and she talked about cloning. Right here is that statement that this was cloned from elsewhere. Yeah. Um, so it was pulled in as a clone and then edited from that point. The cool thing about clones is it brings in a lot of the formatting too. So you don't have to figure out how to set it. You can go in and change it later, but it pulls in a lot of that formatting. So your first mess around in those activities isn't you trying to figure out how to set up front matter and back matter and chapter structure. It will pull it in and then you can make changes to it. And I know that seems like a strange thing to really need to worry about, but otherwise you just get this never ending hundreds of pages of stuff. So it brings in that structure. So it kind of takes one of those things off for you. Something that's really popular about press books that people like these, the books that are available in here is that they have a lot of H5P mm -hmm. activities. And so Kim knows a lot about that, but that's another way you can filter. If we go back to um, the search in the press books directory, if you want to look for books that have H5P activities, which makes it interactive, you can search that way. I think if you have to go back out of out of this particular book and go to, or you can just close that page out of it. Yeah, there you go. So back here at the very bottom of the filters will be H5P activities. And so you can put like, I want to find books that have a minimum of at least one or however many you think, and then it will show you which of those books have that. So we don't have to just search for that. I just wanted you to know that was there. Did you want to take, tell me anything about H5P that's cool? Or I'm sure you're cool. familiar with that. <laughs> uh, H5Ps are just pretty awesome. And there's other, uh, if you go on the MTSU online or the LT and ITC YouTube channels, you'll see a bunch of videos about H5P and there's lots of information about them. But they allow for you to, in real time in the book, students can do engaging activities about the material that they just read in the book. And it can keep them in one place. Um, it can, it just allows them to manipulate the information so it's not quite so correspondency. Um, so that part's kind of cool. And there's a bunch of new cool ones out there that y'all should check out. Okay, so we looked at Open Textbook Library, we looked at Pressbooks Directory. The third one I want to show you today is called OER Commons. And I will admit that it's not really my favorite for, for a couple of reasons, but I still want to show you because there's a lot of good material in there. It's kind of clunky to nerd. It's uh, not organized the best, but remember this is a treasure hunt. So sometimes it's not easy. You have to kind of dig through a lot of stuff before you find find that treasure. So if you go to this oercommons.org, this is a especially a good place to look if you're looking for ancillary materials. So they have all kinds of things from syllabi to uh, lectures, to assignments, lots of different things other than just textbooks. So here, I would not browse because the browsing is not great. I would go straight to the search right here. Um, you can just do an example, Kim, of one that you want to think of. Maybe psychology or, yeah. Okay, so you can just type in like a broad subject. You can go over here and limit down. You can limit by education level, which is nice. So if you want specifically lower division or upper division, we might click that and then hit search. So in here, you usually get a lot of results because there's a lot of stuff in OER Commons. Okay, so 432 things, something to do with psychology. So now you can kind of browse through that, but also it's really helpful to use all their, their limiters over here on the left. So if you wanted to limit by material type, that's what I would probably do first. Are you looking for a textbook? Are you looking for an activity, a lecture? You can pick that, just click on whichever one you think, homework assignment, lecture, whatever. And this is where it's not my favorite of like, it's not real great about always matching what you've selected. So sometimes you may select lecture and then an ebook comes up. So it's kind of hit or miss, but I still like to say, go look there because you might find something really awesome. So that is pretty much OER Commons. You can also filter again by license. I think that's maybe that's, I'm trying to remember where it's at in the list here. There we go, license type. They have it broken down, not by the certain licenses, but unrestricted use, conditional, 
read the fine print different they put different kind of categories on it but that could be helpful to narrow down really quickly okay so those are my top three we're going to show you some other places to look also so kim did you lose the powerpoint or did i you... did <laughs> and i will go find it if you know okay. where it is yeah it's <laughs> probably open in I think it's down here. <laughs> no. Yeah. Let's look. He had it in his email. Let's see. Yeah. Everybody doesn't need a link. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves for one for, second. For, yeah, go ahead and start looking through some of those, those repositories real quick, and then we're going to bring the PowerPoint back up. There we go. Teach me to hit a button. <laughs> okay, so we're going to skip past. We went through the three, the three uh, places to look for OER. It's not sure. It's just... That's true. Okay. All right. So some other places to look. So maybe you don't have to look with those three. Here's some other places. The first thing is our OER research guide which that is just on the library page is library.mtsu.edu slash OER. And that is where I've listed other places to go look for OER also. So I'm gonna let her look that up real quick on here. Since our links aren't working. <laughs> and Janelle, yes. Oh, yeah. Kristen's on, she posted it to the- Okay, good, to the chat. Thank you, Kristen. Which one am I looking at? The first one, the OER research guide to see if it'll let you link to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, is that showing up now? Yes. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Walker Library. So if you go here and they go under finding OER, click that little tab here. Here's where I've linked other places that you can go search. So here's our one we already looked at, Open Textbook Library, Pressbooks Directory. There's lots of other places that have great um, places to search. And ones that I've linked on there also is this Oasis. It's a, a search tool that searches lots of different places at once that you'll get a lot of results from. If you're looking for things other than textbooks, there's some links for that. And then one that I wanna show you specifically is this OER by Discipline Directory. This is something that's real recent that doesn't have a whole lot in it right now, but it's still a good place to check. I think it's gonna, it's gonna keep growing and it's a good place I would go back periodically and see if anything new is there. So they made it in Pressbooks. You can go ahead and just click into the book to read it. And then it's broken down by subject. So you click under the contents and pick like, whichever one of these, agriculture. And then if you scroll down and click that topic there, I whichever one, general. And it, it makes it a little clunky here. You have to go in and select the little plus sign for each thing. So like textbooks, you click the plus sign and then it will list for you certain textbooks about agriculture. So that's nice if you wanna specifically look for your subject. And as people keep adding things, they have some links in here for like entire courses. It's not just textbooks, but I like how it's broken down. You can specifically look for your discipline. So that's a good one to check also. Um, we go back to PowerPoint. Some other ones we won't really look at, but I want you to know that they exist. This one's great for language learning and then called C-O-E-R-L-L. -L. I'm not sure how you're supposed to say that, but so Corel, I'm not sure. Anyway, that's a good one for language. Oasis is that mega search tool and then Openverse is good for images. So just some things to keep, keep in mind. All right, so now that we've started to find things, let's talk a few minutes about evaluating. So here are a few rubrics that I like, and these are also listed back on the research guide if you wanna be able to get back to them later. This first one is one that Kim made when she was at MTSU Online. It's an OER evaluation checklist. That's a nice little quick, gives you a, a guide of things to think about. Talks about the accuracy. Is it current? Who owns it? Is it inclusive? And then at the end, do you recommend using it or not? So that's a great one to look for. Um, two other ones that I like made by kind of big institutions is this one from Affordable Learning Georgia. 
they, 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 they broke, break it down into kind of similar categories, but certain questions to think about. So if you like that one, that one's there. And then my favorite is this, the last one I linked here from BC Campus. I don't know if I just like the format or what, but they have it broken down into these categories. And this is what we're going to use when we um, do our little activity here in a minute. So all of those, if you were evaluating, I would print one of those out and that would be helpful to, to know things to look for. Okay, so as far as evaluating, they all kind of come down to these like five questions, these five kind of categories. The first one is relevance. Does the information address one or more of your class objectives? So that's kind of the, the most important thing. Is it relevant for your needs? Number two, accuracy. Is the information accurate and up-to-date? The third one is production quality. Is the information clear and understandable? Is it easy to navigate? Thinking of your specific students in your classes and what kind of reading level it might be. It could be over their heads. It could be too simple. You're trying to match and see if it's going to be a good fit. Accessibility. So just basic accessibility things to check for is we talked about earlier. Is it available in alternate formats for them to download it, to access it different ways? Um, do the images have alt text? Does the audio and video provide captions? Things that you know that we need to be doing for our students. And then last, licensing. So looking at that license, does it allow me to reuse it, remix it? Can I modify it? That's a, really the biggest question before you want to go to the next step of changing anywhere. Okay, so before we get into the, the worksheet, I'm going to show you guys in a minute. Kim and Claire have a couple of things they want to talk to you about and share. So I'm going to let them have the floor. Yeah, you can first. Right. So we mentioned it a little bit earlier with Karen and the students and rigor of the book. Um, so generally speaking, an undergraduate student isn't thinking about the rigor of a textbook. That's us. Um, that's us looking to see where it was published, who reviewed it, how it was reviewed, how it was created. Um, so thinking about that in your mind in terms of a textbook that has gone through peer review and it's gone through analysis in order for it to be printed and published, are you reviewing the resources that you're putting in your own class for OER purposes? So are you a peer reviewer for anything? Um, are you considered an expert in your field? Have you written on certain topics and areas? If you can say yes to any of those things, then you going through and cultivating your own OER resources and making decisions about what you're putting in your class, you are peer reviewing the resources in your class because you are the peer. You are the one that's making those decisions. They, things wouldn't have been produced elsewhere. You wouldn't have put them in your class if they were not valid and spoke accurately of the points that you were trying to make in your class. Uh, so that's just something to kind of think about in the back of your head. It doesn't have to be a publisher for it to have been peer reviewed because you can do it. You can have a friend do it. You can look at other things that um, other people in your field are producing. That in itself is creating a peer reviewed and uh, establishing some rigor for the information that you're putting there. One of the other paradigms to think about with this is typically in our classes, we have a textbook. And... We have been using these textbooks for a long time, or a textbook was given to us um, by a power that be in our department when we first got here, or when the course was first developed, if it's online, and that's just how it goes. Um, I'm going to venture to guess that every chapter in every textbook that you've ever used has not been phenomenal, and then you kind of picked out the ones that you thought were best uh, and ended up not using them. So the reason I say that is we kind of seem to go into OER thinking, two big things. One, it has to be a textbook in order for it to be used in our class because we came up in a space of textbooks. So everything has to be a textbook, but they don't have to be a textbook. A textbook is just a, a collection of information from elsewhere. So it doesn't have to be a textbook in your class. It could be a collection of things from elsewhere. It can be articles, it can be podcasts, it can be videos, it doesn't have to be a textbook. But in your mind, if you need it to be a book, that's where something like a press book or something like that makes a lot of sense because you are actually taking those resources and putting them together in one space. 
things like Pressbooks and things like that, you can embed those videos and podcasts and articles and resources and create that way. The secondary of that is you don't have to go from no OER to a textbook. You really can go from no OER to I'm going to add three articles that are not in the textbook to my class, and you have just put some new things to OER. And if every time that you're doing it, you're adding a little bit more, you are eventually creating that OER space and an OER resource, but you don't have to go from zero to 100 in one semester, because most of us don't have the bandwidth to do that. If you do, I have some other projects I'd love for you to help us work on, um, but most of us can't do that. So those are just a couple of things like in the back of our minds to start thinking about is that just because we had textbooks when we were going through our educational process doesn't mean that today's students need, want, or utilize a textbook. So just kind of think about that. Okay, we can advance it. I will advance it. So to piggyback a little bit off what Kim said, we, um, I'm in human sciences and human development and family science program, and our colleagues together have been working really hard to put together OER because some of you may be in areas or discipline where things change quickly. What we know, we do know that there are some things about relationships that stay the same or that some things about individuals and families, but the context of all of those systems really matter. And so for us, what we found is that OER is super helpful for infusing timeliness, accuracy, and engagement with our students. And so through our work through MTSU, we've published what we thought was a way of thinking about adding in OER and a little bit more in the ways that Kim was speaking to add on to what Janelle said, not just textbooks, but thinking about topics or areas where you can pull in various OER or you may already be using OER. And what we found is that sometimes there are things that we want to discuss, but we need them to be highly engaging like a podcast to get students thinking and get them talking and applying information, but we don't necessarily need them to be of high scholarly quality. Which is not far enough, I think I might have oh. accidentally advanced it. <laughs> and then we have other research or reports that we want people to read that may not be very engaging for students, but they do provide some of that data and information when it comes to the scholarly content that we want. So if you think about various OER and various uses, it can be helpful to getting started beyond just looking for a textbook. If you wanna start small, it might be helpful to think about all of these outlets and different things that you can use. So this is an article that we published and it'll be um, delivered in the PowerPoints that we have that you can reference there, but just another food for thought and thinking before we start and dive in. I'll pass it back to Janelle. Yeah. Okay, so we are going to do a practice search together using a worksheet that, that I found that someone openly licensed. So it's called the OER Treasure Hunt. It was made by Abby Elder at Iowa State uh, University. And if we can copy and paste right. that and get it in the chat. Right. Okay, it's already in there. Awesome. Um, so if you can go to that and then make your own version of it, so go to like file, make a copy. Yes, please. You can go in and start filling that out as we work on it today. And we're just going to kind of walk through the pieces of it, and then we're going to let you guys be free to, to do some searches on your own. Did you say it was already in there? I think she said someone already put it in there. I did. She got it. It's the Google Doc. Yep. Good. She's on top of it. Okay, so let's now I had it open on her computer, so I knew she was going to need it. Yeah, there you go. All right, so this kind of has you fill out first, like fill in the course name that you're looking for. So I just did an example. I'm gonna grab my notes from over here. If, if I was looking for something about like abnormal psychology, and I would just fill that out with the course name there. And then as you go down, it's gonna have you identify some topics. So hopefully you are already thinking of topics of what you want to look for. So if we would go, um, uh, she's gonna kind of model good behavior. Yeah, <laughs> she's making a copy. Open it up. It's real slow. That's okay. Talk amongst yourself. So I, I jotted down some ideas of like, if I were looking in a, a textbook that I already had on abnormal psychology and I pulled out topics, different sections or modules of that course, I wrote down like psychological disorders, treatment, case studies, history, and the different topics here. So Kim might put treatment as one. Is he gonna let you type? Yeah. Okay. And then over here, 
is where you can think of this other keywords for that topic. So, for example, you know, librarians are all about thinking of synonyms and different different words for the same topic. So, for treatment, I wrote down treatment or interventions or therapy or different things kind of for that same topic. And then another one I wrote down as an example was instead of case studies, I might do case studies or research. So different things that have to do with the same topic. So it's good to have thought this through a little bit first before you go into the to your searching and have some keywords ready. Okay. So then if we go down to the next part, now you're going to be ready to search. So she links here some of the things, same thing, ones that we talked about. Um, I would also suggest writing in there for yourself, maybe Pressbooks directory, because we looked at that one. Um, OER Commons, if you're looking for ancillary material. But I would start with the Open Textbook Library. And then we click into that. And just as an example of, of the process, so let's say we're going to browse first for abnormal psychology. So we look under subjects, we go down, we look under social sciences, we find psychology, and we look, look there. So we start to just browse through that broad subject of psychology. We look at, we have our keyword list, and we look just kind of generally, does anything match up with, with the topics that we've written down? So if we keep going down, all of a sudden I start to see that one right there that you passed just came. Fundamentals of Psychological Disorders. Is that exactly the same name as the course? No. Is it one of my topics? That's one of the things you can pull out and then go look, and maybe you'll find one chapter that works. Maybe not the whole book is a perfect match, but like Kim was saying, it's kind of like looking for pieces that match your different topics. Um, so that's one way to do it. If you go up to the top and we can do a keyword search for abnormal psychology, and see if anything there is going to match some of the topics or the keywords that we wrote down. Now, at this point, we don't really want to dig super deep into each book. because That's a very time consuming. Right now, all we're wanting to do is do just kind of a quick search. Anything that looks remotely helpful, we're going to jot that down on our worksheet. So if we go back to the worksheet, and there's going to be a place there for you to write down up to 10 titles. So here you're just going to jot down or type in the title that you found and the URL of how to get back to it later. It is super important to put the URL in there. You are not going to remember where you found it. Right. It's just a copy space. To yeah. Do it. Go ahead and save that. Okay. So then let's say we've, done, we've searched a couple of places. We found 10 different titles that look promising. Then the next part is the curate. So then you're going to go in and target three of those that are the most promising things that you've looked through. Then you're going to dig in deeper and look to see if it matches and evaluate it with that with those rubrics that we looked at earlier. So you're gonna look at relevance, accuracy, all of those things. Here's where you can make notes about how it matches up uh, to the rubric. Okay, so today you might get a couple searches done. Probably not gonna to get to the evaluation part. That's gonna probably gonna be later. But then at the end, reflect. So you go back, you look at those three, and you're basically like, okay, did these materials fit my need or not? Um, is there anything I found that I could use as is? I can just adopt it and use it. Or is there anything that I could maybe change and adapt it to make it fit my specific need? So that's the basic process that we're going to do. Let's see how much time we have left. About 10 minutes. So if you guys want to hang around for the last 10 minutes, we're thinking about putting you in breakout groups or rooms or what do you want to call it and kind of just work on this. We will have one of us in there in each one, I think. To kind of like if you have questions so i'm gonna leave, let kim figure out how to set that up so if you wanted to hang around and do a, a breakout room with a couple people we're going to spend the last 10 minutes letting you guys search and ask questions we probably need to stop the recording also before we do that so now what happens in vegas stays in right. vegas <laughs> <laughs> those conversations and questions won't be recorded <laughs>